I have the Fibonacci sequence. I've subtracted these terms to the left, so it might look a little different, but it's the same thing. Um, so if we want to solve this thing, guessing won't work. You can try it. Um, you'll find that it just doesn't work. So we'll try the other method that I've showed you so far, which is finding a generating series. So I'm going to let f of x be the power series going from 1 to infinity where each coefficient is a Fibonacci number. And so if I write that out, that's going to be f1x plus f2x squared plus f3x cubed plus f4x to the fourth, and so on. And I can look at, so my goal is that I want to be able to plug in this original definition of the Fibonacci sequence and find some simpli simplification and be able to solve for f of x. In this case, it's not going to be like a, a differential equation like in the previous examples. But what I can do is if I multiply f of x times x, then what I'll get is this will just be, this will shift the f1 over. It'll be x f1 x squared, and I'll have f2 x cubed, f3 x to the 4, and so on. And you'll notice that what I'm getting here is these coefficients f3 is lining up with the f2. So if I do this one more time, then I'll have it, it'll look like this. And the, the point of doing this is that now if I just took f3 minus f2 minus f1, that's 0 by this recurrence relation. f4 minus f3 minus f2, that's 0. So I just want to take the first line and subtract the second two lines. So over here on the left, that's just 1 times f of x minus x minus x squared times f of x. And over here, these cancel out, these cancel out, they all they all cancel out. All I'm left with is this triangle of values here. And so now I can just stop uh, writing f1, f2, etc. because I have these two points here. These are the only, f1 and f2 are all that's involved here anyway. So I could just write f1x, that's just x. Here I have 1 times x squared minus 1 times x squared. So I just have x here. I can solve for f of x, and we see that we just get this nice rational function. Um, it's worth mentioning here that um, it's only valid to do this kind of like adding, subtracting, canceling out thing with series when um, when the series is convergent. And so here we have a series that's dependent on x, and so this is really only valid um, for, a, for a limited uh, radius of convergence. And um, we actually know that radius is actually going to be pretty small because the coefficients are Fibonacci numbers, and we know that the Fibonacci sequence is increasing. It's pretty clear if you just look at it. Um, you can see that you're just, um, since this is just the previous two terms and all the terms are positive, you're, you're adding positive numbers together, so clearly it's increasing. Also in the last video, um, I showed that the Fibonacci sequence um, has exponential n behavior. So really, these coefficients are like exponentially increasing. So um, you can see that if you put in any x that was uh, greater than or equal to 1 um, or less than or equal to negative 1, that clearly this thing would diverge. So um, the radius of convergence must be actually smaller than from negative 1 to 1. Um, so anyway, at this point, so all, all we really care about is that we don't really care about the convergence of this series anyway, since all we care about is the sweet juicy coefficients here. That's what we're trying to solve for. So um, that's not really a big concern. Um, as long as this thing does have a neighborhood of convergence around zero, which it does, and I don't want to get too much into that. So here what we want to do is we want to try to find a way that we can re-express f of x in a way that it's gonna, like, as a as a power series, so that it'll tell us what the coefficients of that power series are. So, 
what I can do here is if I do a partial fraction decomposition, then I'll have linear terms in the denominators of two uh, rational functions added together, and then I can use geometric series to um, rewrite that as a power series. So what I'm going to do here, is if you factor the denominator, you'll see that f of x is equal to x over, this is just going to be negative x plus golden ratio and x plus golden ratio conjugate. If you're wondering what the golden ratio and golden ratio conjugate are, just check out the last video. And so the idea with, with this is that I should be able to rewrite this as x a over x plus golden ratio, b over x plus golden ratio conjugate, and then I can find out what these b and a are. So if I take both of these sides, multiply them both by the denominator of this, I'm going to choose not to include this negative here in that, in that multiplication. I'll just end up having negative x is equal to, here this, this one's going to cancel out with that, and so I just have x plus this. And then over here, there are faster ways to do this, but uh, I don't want to do something that would be confusing. Um, so anyway, from here, if I want to find out what A and B are, I could just plug in, uh, if I want to, if, if I want to cancel this out, I could just plug in X is equal to negative golden ratio, and then here I'd just have golden ratio is equal to A times negative golden ratio plus golden ratio conjugate, and then this is just zero. And as I showed in the last video, if you take the golden ratio and subtract the conjugate, that's root 5, and so this is just the negative of this, so this is just negative root 5. So if we wanted to solve for a, we would find that a is just equal to um, golden ratio over root 5, negative. So then we can do the same thing to figure out what b is. You, you plug in x is equal to negative golden ratio conjugate, and that'll cause these ones to cancel out, and you'll just see that golden ratio conjugate is equal to b times, uh, so this would be negative golden ratio conjugate plus golden ratio. And this is just, this one here, the one I just mentioned, is just root 5. And so if you're solving for b, you'll see that b is just equal to golden ratio conjugate over root 5. So this means I'm going to use a new piece of paper here. Um, if we were going to rewrite f of x, this is just going to be um, 1 over square root of 5 times the, I'm just factoring this out because this was part of a and b. So a was negative golden ratio over root 5, and then I had in the denominator this. And then this was the b. So what I can do from here is I can just divide the top and bottom of this one by the golden ratio. And so that would just give me negative 1 over x over golden ratio plus 1. And then over here I can divide the top and bottom of this one by the golden ratio conjugate. And so I'd have 1 over x over golden ratio conjugate plus 1. And so this is getting pretty close to looking like geometric series. Uh, one thing I can do here is using another one of those properties I showed you in the last video, I can replace this 1 over golden ratio with a negative golden ratio conjugate. And then over here I can replace the 1 over golden ratio conjugate with a negative golden ratio. So now this is really looking like a geometric series, and I can just do the substitution right here. This would be, this would be my uh, r in both cases here. Um, so here I'm just going to have a series going from zero to infinity. Of this one is just going to be golden ratio conjugate times x to the n. And then I have another one over here.
And so what you can do is you can just um, combine these into one sum. I'm going to bring the root 5 inside. So I could say this is um, golden ratio. Oops, I forgot a negative sign here. Sorry about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this one first and then this one since this one's subtracted and it looks nicer. So here I would have golden ratio to the n minus golden ratio conjugate to the n. And this is all multiplied by x to the n because x to the n is a factor of both. And so you'll see this is f of x. And it, if you remember uh, from before, I defined f of x as being the sum from 1 to infinity of f of n x to the n. And okay, this is actually, so I could say that this is from 0 to infinity. Uh, you can also start the Fibonacci numbers at 0, and you'll find that this is consistent with the, uh, with the relationship. The 0th Fibonacci number is just 0. And so what I, what I have here is that the Fibonacci number must be this. We have, we have these coefficients matching up, so um, this is the solution. And this is called Binet's formula, even though it wasn't Binet who discovered it.